Hello World Outreach Revival Center. Good to be with you on this beautiful Wednesday mid-morning noonday time for a word of encouragement. Hoping some of you will join with me. I'm wearing my Jesus hat. I'll have you know I put Jesus on some wasps today and took care of them. Uh, I can see Miss Maddie, I think, and I think that's Rose and Jim. I'm trying to look at the icon. It's good to have you guys with me today. And uh, just a daily word of encouragement. Um, and it's good to have you guys. I'm going to slide this thing over. There we go. I always forget to do that. There we go. We got Rose and Jim and Maddie and Chris with us. And Billy, good afternoon, Billy. It's good to have you, my sister-in-law. And we'll see who else pops on here. Amen. Hello, Rose. It's a good day today in the Lord. We went to bed real late. We got up real early, but God is still good. He strengthens our bodies. Elizabeth Irving, good to have you today. Thank you for joining. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes and see who all pops online. We've had some people from out of state. We've had some... Uh, just the people from out of town been visiting with us. So, hello, Susie Frierson. Good to have you. I want to remind everyone we do have church service tonight at 7 p.m. Expecting something good to happen. Expecting God's presence. You know, one thing I'm finding out, we, you know, we're kind of tired over here. I won't go through all the boring details. And uh, today is hopefully the last day of our getting so weary. We've been up late and pushing hard but you know in your most tired moment is when God is is the strongest for you and that's the beautiful thing about the Lord so praise God for that we'll just see who all comes on with us and uh, we're going to share God's word in just a moment if you're joining us please let us know that you're here and uh, we'd love to to acknowledge you and and I hope you're having a good day as we are my wife is in the kitchen Right now, she said, go give your word, and then you can have, well, it'll be breakfast for me because we didn't get to eat earlier, so she's making some sausage and eggs, so I'm excited <laughs> about breakfast today, but I'm excited about speaking the word of God with you guys, too, as well, so we'll see who all shows up, and we're going to get right into the word, and uh, thank you for joining us today. I understood there was some bad weather last night. I don't remember any of it. Um, I just kind of, when I went to sleep, I went to sleep hard. So let's, uh, let's say a prayer. We're going to get started. Father, I thank you for each one that's joining us this afternoon. We ask you to bless your word. Let it be alive into our hearts, Lord, a, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let us grow in you, God. Let us learn of your word. And Father, just be our strength. We thank you for it. We ask you, O oh God, to uh, bring revelation, Lord. We, we need you to bring the revelation of your word today. And we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Hello, Pamela Clausen. It is good to have you as well with us. And we'll see who else pops on here real quick. But uh, while we're waiting on them, we're going to go to 1 Peter. Uh, chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 13. So 1 Peter 1, 13. Hello, Cindy Adams. It is good to have you. Amen. Tell Brian we said hi. And uh, we miss you guys. Hope to see you soon. And um, amen. So let's get rolling here. I was uh, just came in. I, I went to bed at 2 this morning. I, my alarm went off for 5.30, I think. Um Quarter to six. I was up at six o'clock anyway, so didn't get a lot of sleep and had to go out out uh, towards Henley Field. And I came back and just just exhausted. I walked in the house. And I said, "Man, God, I'm tired." And I said, "Lord, what is the word for today?" And here's the word He said, "Gird up the loins of your mind." I said, "Okay, I got it." So I want to share that scripture with you. In 1 Peter 1, verse 13, and then we're going to go to 1 Peter 5. And it just says this, Wherefore, gird up the loins, this is King James Version, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, 
and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now this scripture is referring to get ready and stay stay close to the Lord, stay plugged in, stay walking in Him, and be prepared for His return. But I just want to bring it to not in the return of Christ or us going to be with Him, but in the place of just living today right now. It says this, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober. Very powerful. Uh, I looked up the definition of gird up. And, and here's what, what uh, the scripture says, To gird up the loins of your mind is an ancient way of saying, this was in the dictionary, it's crazy, To gird up the loins of your mind Hello, Joy, good to have you. To gird up the loins of your mind. Now, everyone knows this in here, up here. This is where 99.999% of the battle goes. Hello, Rick Ross. Man, good to see you, buddy. Uh, in the mind is where most of the battle comes in. And so the scripture in 1 Peter 1.13 says, Gird up the loins of your mind. And I found this in the dictionary. It's pretty cool. It says, the ancient way of saying, man up. Get ready to go to work. Get ready for war. How neat is that? Where the scripture is declaring, gird up the loins of your mind to be sober. The word be sober means literally don't, don't be sleeping. Don't be uh, drunk. Don't be uh, turned aside. But get your focus on. And I think that's the word for today. For the church body is gird up the loins of your mind, man up, get ready for work, get ready for the battle. And it's uh, I want to jump from there to First Peter five seven and eight because these two tie together. First Peter five seven and eight. Uh, we'll start with six because this is very powerful. It says, humble yourself therefore unto the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Uh, and, and verse 5, can I even read that one to you? It says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elder. All of you be sub subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And lately, the last two or three uh, times I've been speaking or sharing or even Bible study, we find that God is continuously saying, humble yourselves before each other, exalt others better than yourself, walk in humility, be clothed in humility, be broken in that. And why does he say that? Because if we, listen to me close, if we can't humble ourselves to men that are around us, we can't humble ourselves to God who created us. And I'll make it this way. If you can't humble yourself, I have a B here. If you can't humble yourself before someone you can see, then you're never going to humble yourself before the God you can't see. And so he's always saying all through the scriptures, humble yourself in front of others. Exalt them. Esteem them better than yourself. Love them even as you love yourself. Uh... This is the Word of God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is a, a precursor or a encouragement for one thing. So that he says, if you can humble yourself before men, then you can humble yourself before me, and I will exalt you in due time. When we walk in humility, he can exalt us. Now here's verse 7 and 8 is the scripture I'm trying to get to. This other stuff was free. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Here we go. You ready? Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. The word vigilant there means never be off guard. Be ready every moment to resist the enemy. Be ready as a warrior. Remember when Gideon was uh, sent to fight the battle. And he, I think he started out, if I remember correctly, with 32,000 men. And God said, there's too many. Uh, th then we go from there. 
There's 32,000 men, there's too many, and God breaks it down to 300 left. Who were the 300 that he had left to go into battle against the Midianites? You know who they were? They were the men that instead of laying down in the water, basically, they were the ones that pulled the water with their hand and lapped it like a dog. And that sounds strange, except for they were alert. You see, some laid down in the water, just face down. When you're face down in the water, you can't see around you. Some were afraid. He sent them home. He said, if you're afraid, go home. The ones that laid down, he sent them home. But the ones that pulled the water up and they were able to watch while they drank, those were the ones that were staying vigilant. Those were the ones that had their minds girded up, the loins of their minds girded, strengthened. They were staying alert to what's going on. We're living in a very odd time. I, I'm, uh, uh, Mandy, is it Pedal over there where the mayor, the mayor of Pedal made a stupid statement, excuse the slang. Um, I don't know if he's racist. I don't know if he's not racist. I don't know if he uh, meant something totally different. All I know is he let words slip out of his mouth. And I have to say this, because he wasn't vigilant. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't focused on God. They, they had a town hall meeting last night. They're in there uh, protesting. They want him to resign. For the things he said, the things he said were insensitive. They were harsh. They were wrong. I don't know why he said them. It was foolish on his part. But you see, his mind wasn't vigilant. He wasn't alert. He wasn't staying awake enough to say, Man, you know, people are watching my life, and my words will carry authority and power, and they can either kill or they can bring life. They can hurt or they can build up. Now let's take the view off of him and say, that's where the church is. We've been sharing, we are the light of the world. We are, we're the city on a hill. We're the salt of the earth. And God wants us to be vigilant and to be awake and aware, realizing that the enemy is always out there prowling around, looking for any single opportunity to catch us in a snare. Do you know what the word devour means? The enemy walks about as a, a lion seeking whom he may devour. It means to swallow up. In one gulp is what it means. It doesn't mean he wants to nibble at you. He wants to swallow you up. And I'm not preaching about this mayor, but I'm going to say this. This situation is swallowing him up. I mean, they're not going to rest until he resigns. He might need to. I don't, ha I don't know the guy's heart. All I know is... Sometimes, if we're not vigilant, we can get in a real mess. And as a Christian, we have to realize that there is a bullseye on your back. And it's one from the enemy. And he'll do anything he can to discredit you and to discredit me. He'll do anything he can to discourage you and discourage me. He'll do anything he can to separate you and to separate me. He'll do anything he can to cause pride to come in that we might self-destruct and, and destroy the work he's doing in us. Or depression. Do you understand? The enemy does not sleep. He's a spirit being. He don't have to sleep. And so he has studied the human race for thousands of years. He will come against us with thoughts and with situations. And if just that one day we just happen to be in a bad mood and we open our mouth, we don't know what damage that can cause. So I want to challenge you, church. Let's stay vigilant. Let's stay awake. Let's stay aware. And say, and we don't have to walk in fear. All we got to do is say, God, you guard me. Let your word be the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Let my words be life. Let me speak your word and not mine, God. Let me speak life and not death. That's what we have to do, guys. So I just felt this morning as I walked in, I was kind of wore down a little bit and said, man, God, I am tired. What's the word? He said, gird up the loins of the mind. And I said, wow, 
You all know my scripture, I think, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to bringing down the strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You see, we must fill ourselves with God's word. And when protests come, or this comes, or that comes, or the next situation comes, we have to put ourselves in that position to say, God, let your word be quick to come out of my mouth. Let your love to be quick to come out of my mouth. You ever heard this expression, don't push that button? <laughs> Everybody has buttons, and the enemy knows which ones they are, and he'll just go, <laughs> sorry. He'll push that button, bam, and he'll set you off, and you'll say things or do things or act certain ways. Can I tell you something? Jesus said, if you let me in, cast all your cares upon me, trust me, let me take your life, let me guide your life, let me be the Lord of your life, I'll go in and disconnect that button. That's called inner healing. Did you hear me? That's called divine healing and holiness and purity, where God says those buttons that once would be pushed in your life that would cause some mess, I'll come in and I'll disconnect that button. How many of you have tried to push a button to turn a light on or something and it doesn't work? Isn't that irritating? You keep pushing it and you push it and you turn it and you push it and it won't work and you push it some more and you twist it and you push it and it just irritates you because you want that button to work. That's the way the enemy feels about your life and my life. He wants the buttons in your life to work so he can push them anytime he wants. But the Bible says, resist the devil, submit to God, and the button will be broke, <laughs> and he'll run from you. Did you hear me? Jesus comes in, he says, I want to do a whole a work in you. Didn't the scripture say he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, the punishment for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He wants to heal the inner deepest part of yours and mine's emotions. Every place where we're hurt on the inside, that's where he goes to heal. And how does he do it? By his word, by his mercy, and by his grace. There's nothing more beautiful than to see somebody that is filled with the love and the healing virtue of Jesus. And the enemy tries to push their button and it don't work anymore. You know how frustrated the devil gets to a, a Bible reading, spirit filled, faith walking, life talking Christian. One that's led by his spirit that says, here I am today, God, guide me. The enemy hates those people because what he does doesn't work. That makes you more than a conqueror. That makes you a victor. You're not contending for victory. You're contending from the place of victory. Oh, church, be encouraged today. Think about it and say, Lord, let me fill my mind with your word. Let me fill my heart with your word. Lord, help me to be strong in you and vigilant and sharp. And when the situation arises, I think I saw joy put on there a moment ago. When the situation arises, pray before you speak. That's what we got to do. God, put a guard on my mouth and on my lips. And help me to say the right thing at the right time. Do you know there's nothing wrong with shutting up for a minute? It's a sad thing, but a lot of times older people, somewhere in that age system, they get that revelation later in life. But we should get it earlier to realize, don't be so quick to answer. Matter of fact, the Bible says in James, be slow to answer, quick to hear, listen closely, and then pray and say, God, how do I respond? How do I respond? You know, I was watching, we have some protesters here in Picayune, and uh, I, I'm, I don't have an issue with that, but I, I loved what uh, one of the, uh, the uh, bakeries did in the area. They're Christians. Matter of fact, uh, the, the husband of the the woman that runs the bakery is a pastor. 
And you know what they did to those that were protesting in Picayune? They brought them cupcakes last night. How crazy is that? Just to show the love of God. You see, how we respond to a lot of things can hurt us or strengthen us. And I'm challenging you, be sharp. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. Be sharp in your mind. Be vigilant. Be sober. And I'm going to read it again. Gird up the loins of your mind. 1 Peter 1.13 The ancients, this was a way of them saying, man up, get ready to go to work, get ready for battle. We have to stay alert. Be vigilant. Ready every moment to resist the devil. Never off guard. Never off guard. That's why daily we need to meditate on God's word. Daily we need to read the scriptures. Daily we need to declare God's word in our life. Daily we need to say, God, okay, it's another day. Someone said the other day, and if you never saw the show Jumanji, it's kind of a strange show. Not the new one, but the old one. It was about a game that a boy found, and Robin Williams was in it. And every time they rolled the dice, it caused all kinds of strange things to happen, different levels. Someone said the other day, what level of Jumanji are we on this week in our nation? Because we have uh, the virus, then we have the riots, and now we have a hurricane coming in the Gulf. Um, I think it is, is it that a tropical storm. It's, I don't know which one, but it's coming. <laughs> and you say, what next, God? What next? Right in the middle of all this, Sister Tammy and I got a call that we were having a, a, a random audit from the, the uh, state. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> What's the next thing? But how do we handle it, guys? How do we handle the next world issue, the next world pressure, the next whatever comes our way. We need to be sober, vigilant, prepared, watchful, not fearful, watchful and saying, God, your word says, cast all my cares on you, for you care for me. And so that's what we must do, church, is every day. On the way here, I, I'm going to tell you something, I was a little overwhelmed on the way home this morning. After being up real late and getting up real early, and I was a little overwhelmed. And on the way here, I said, God, I cast my cares, my worries upon you. That's a sure way to stay vigilant, to stay sober, to stay sharp. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm just looking at some of the writing here. We're going to just scan. Here. My mom, oops, I might have messed up. There we go. My mom has always said, do not ever ask what's next. Well, that's, that's probably a good one. Good to have you guys. Bridget with us, all of you. Um, Joy, I thought you had a prayer request in here. I'm looking down. Thank you for being with me today, by the way. It is a real privilege. Amen. Billy says, we come against that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All negativity. We cut it off in Jesus' name. Everyone, please pray for my mama. Martha, she is waiting on the coronavirus test results. She's very ill. So, Lord, we come in agreement for Joy's mother right now. And we speak healing in her body. And, Lord, that this virus is not going to have any authority over her. Lord, that the result will come back negative and that she'll be okay so god we speak healing to her we curse this thing at the root we command it to go in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we speak to sickness in her body martha be healed in the name of jesus we thank you for it father just church stay in agreement with us thank you for joining me today remember service tonight is live and uh, we are just expecting God to take our nation and our world. We're believing for a third great awakening, a power of the Holy Spirit. Sunday was a very powerful time. The youth last night was powerful. 
Come expecting tonight something good to happen. We love you so much. Thank you for joining me today. Stay sober. Stay vigilant. Gird up the loins of your mind. And when the enemy comes by and you hear him growling in the background, say, Jesus, I cast my cares on you because you care for me. Guard our mouths, O God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. And I will see you tonight and then tomorrow at noon again. God bless. Have a great day. Got flies over here.